Okay. Uh, in the previous lectures, we were studying the ILDs or the qualitative ILDs for uh, mostly we were focusing on different types of beams. For example, simply spotted beams or overhanging beams or structures like that. Uh, but uh, today we are going to start studying about the ILDs for any member of a trust. You know, uh, we have studied before the midterm also that a trust consists of number of straight members of the actual members which are connected in different geometrical shapes uh, as per the loading conditions or the requirements and uh, this is what a trust structure is. So in these type of structure, basically uh, in a trust structure, usually they are built to, uh, in case of bridges, as you might have seen in case of the railway bridges, these structures are very common. And the main purpose is to carry the load onto the joints. Now this is an important point that uh, why only the loads on the truss are acting at the joints. So for this, uh, to answer this question, this figure is very important. In this figure, as you can see, that uh, usually in physical condition or in actual cases, these type of structures exist. For example, this is, uh, let's suppose that this is one bridge on which there is a concrete slab. And this concrete slab, uh, when a vehicle or any load is moving on this concrete slab, it will, let's suppose, enter from this side and it will continue to move on this concrete slab and exit from this side. Now, when, when it is on this slab or this deck, uh, it will transfer the load onto these vertical members or these straight members, which are called as stringers, okay? So these stringers in turn will transfer the load onto these horizontal members, these ones, as you can see over here. And these members are known as floor beams. And actually, uh, these floor beams are connected to a truss member or to the joints of the truss. For example, as you can see that this floor beam is connected to this joint of the truss. This floor beam is connected to this joint of the truss. And similarly, over here, there would be some kind of a floor beam which is connected with this joint of the beam. So usually in the case of truss, always the loads are acting on the joints. There is uh, like... Uh, I think very rare case on which the load is directly acting on the member. And if you remember uh, before midterm, when we were solving the question of the trusses, we mostly encountered the trusses on which the loads are acting directly onto the joints. There was no load onto the member or into the middle of the uh, section. And that is why there is no bending or shear force acting uh, in a truss member. There are only axial force that is acting in case of trusses. So basically to plot an ILD for truss means we have to show the variation of axial force in any member. For example, let's say if I ask you to plot the ILD, you have to move the load onto this truss and plot and compute the axial force in this member and plot its variation. And similarly, this procedure will continue for every member and you have to plot the influence line for each member and finally, you will get the final result. For example, as you can see in this truss, if I have to plot the ILD for this truss, what will I do? I have to consider the, that the load is moving onto this truss and I will consider a point load on each joint separately. Okay, for example, in first case, I will say that the point load is acting or this will be confusing. Let's say the, uh, in the first case, let's say the point load is acting at this joint you will compute the reaction just simply as we used to do in the case of trusses by method of equilibrium or uh, yeah by method of equilibrium or by solving equations of equilibrium and then you will compute the reactions and once you have the reaction you will apply the method of joints or method of section uh, and for example if i ask you to plot the ild for this member that is a b member and you will apply the method of joints and method of section to calculate the force in this member then you will place the moving load onto this joint that is one because you know that the ilds are always for the unit load you will place the unit load onto this joint again compute the reactions and then again calculate the force into this member by 
any of this method, method of joints or method of section. And after solving it for each joint, you will have like multiple values of force on the, uh, in this member. And then you will simply plot those actual force values on a graph or on a simple X and Y axis and connect those points and you will get the shape of ILD for a particular number. And uh, similarly, for uh, this is for one case, but obviously the truss is considered uh, is a combination of different members. So you will you have to continue this procedure for all the members to get the ILD for the whole truss. But again, it's a hectic procedure to do it for the truss members. So usually in the questions or for the case of assessment, really one member has been given to you. But obviously in actual cases or in real life cases, you have to do it for all the members. So, and today we are going to do this procedure. For uh, these are some of the basic steps to plot the ILD, which I have briefly explained just now. And uh, you know that uh, the trust and the trust and the member of the trust only actual forces are acting. There is no shear force. There is no bending moment in a trust member. And uh, loads are acting on the joints. And I have explained to you the reason that why the loads are directly acting on the joints because the load from the deck is transferred to the stringers and this from the stringers it is transferred to the floor beams and those floor beams are connected to the joints of the truss and that is why the joints are loaded when the load is moving over any kind of a bridge structure. So what we have to do to plot the ILD, for example, if we want to plot the ILD for one member, we have to place the unit load on each of the joints separately compute the reaction by using equation of equilibrium. Then we will compute the actual force in that member by using any of the method, that is method of section or method of joints. And we have already studied these methods. And uh, once we do this, we will get a table or a set of values. For example, this is my say, distance of the point load, and this will be my force in a particular member. And I will say that zero value is 10, at 10 value is 100, at 20 the value is 60, something like this. And I will simply plot these points on the graph and connect these points and I will get the shape of ILD for a particular number of address. And this is, uh, and then you have to repeat the process for each member and finally you will get the ILD for the whole address. Uh, let us solve a simple example problem to understand these steps in a better way. If you have any question about this one, you can ask me. OK, uh, moving on. Uh, this is a trust member or this is a trust structure. And for this trust structure, uh, we have to plot the IND for this member, that is GB. And this is an example problem from Hippler. You can also see that after the lecture. So uh, we need to plot the influence line diagram for this member GB and there is no loading given and you know the reason because for the uh, case of ILD you have to plot it for the moving load and moving load is one which is uh, which we take as a unit load so ILD is always for the unit load so this is the truss and these are the dimensions and we have to plot the ILD for members GB so let's move on to the whiteboard uh, this trust that I have shown you already. And now, the, what is the first step? First step is I have to move my unit load uh, or I have to place my unit load at this point and compute the reactions and calculate, it, and calculate the force in each of this member. And uh, these distances are six meters. Okay, so I have to, uh, the first step is I have to place a unit load as let's say first joint is this one and compute the force in this member. The second step is uh, I will calculate or place the unit load at joint B and calculate the forces in this member GB. Third one is place the unit load over here and again calculate the force in this one. Fourth one is place the unit load over this joint and calculate the forces and the fifth step is place the unit load at this point E and again calculate the unit or the force in member GB. Uh, first, I will begin with joint C because once you solve it for one joint, you can 
the process is repetitive. So you just simply have to solve it for one joint and then uh, you will know that which method, method of section or method of joints you have to apply and you are going to get the results. So let's suppose that uh, first I have placed uh, unit load at joint C and I will compute the reaction. Can anyone tell me what will be the reaction at joint A and joint D? Fizzer. Can you hear me? Alian. Sir, we need to Okay. <coughs> Sir, point C, pay na point two. Uh, point C, yeah. Sir, E pe hoga 0.5. Wait, for sir, 0.5, 0.5 will I guess. Yes, it will be 0.5 because it's a symmetrical section and you can see from that also. So anyone, uh, any confusion about this one, anyone? Or do I need to solve it? Let's say I will take the moment at point A. That will be zero. And uh, then I will compute. And due to this force, I have this moment of one multiplied by moment arm that is 12 and on this side uh, this is unknown for now let's say r b r e multiply by 24 so i will get r e is equal to 0 0.5 and similarly by sigma f y is equal to 0 r a plus r e i have one and r a is also 0 0.5. So now I have got the reaction. So can anyone tell? Uh, sir? Yes. Yes. Sir, sir, we have point loads, sir. We have to take out the reactions. No, if you remember the case of IRD, uh, we have to move a unit load over the entire length of the beam. OK, so similar, uh, same is the case uh, for the trusses. You have to place the unit load on each joint of the truss and compute the reactions. And based on that, based on this, for example, just consider that this unit load is now the applied load on this truss. And considering this applied load, I have to compute the force in the member GB. So uh, if you remember from the method, uh, from the truss analysis, what were our steps. Firstly, we would compute the reaction, then we will apply the method of joints or method of sections to compute the forces on GB. So it's not just for the calculation of reaction. This unit load is to compute the force in this member GB when the load is acting at joint C. Did you get my point? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So can anyone tell me that uh, which method should we apply to calculate the force? Method of joints or the method of sections? Joint, sir. Achha, sir? Yes. Um, sir, if point C, we have to remove it, then point G will be enough, right? At point G. Now, like the unit load of point 1 is on C, then G will be different, or yes. it will be different, right? Okay, sir. Thank you. Actually, there is... Yeah, don't confuse it with, with that one because as I have shown you in this figure also, yes, that yes. when the load load is moving from on this deck slab, the load uh, is being transferred on the joint separately. Yes, so yes. for now, we are considering the unit load and we will repeat the procedure. Uh, so for this one, someone uh, you were saying that uh, we have to apply the method of joint. Um, but I would say that the method of joint can be a uh, long procedure. We have to start from this joint maybe and then we have to solve these members which we don't need obviously because we only need the ILD for GB. So for this truss or for the longer truss as we did in the previous cases, the method of section worked quite well. So let's see if it works for this one. So for method of section, uh, we can have 
uh, we cannot have more than three members in one section. So if I cut a section from here, I will have three unknown. This FGF, FGB, and FCB, right? So I have three unknowns and uh, I can, uh, but I need only one force. So I can simply apply this method of joint and I will get the force in this member GB in one simple step. So let's say I have cut this section from here and I will name it as ZZ and I will plot this shape over here. This is my truss. So this will be the force FGH. This is the force FCB. And this will be the force f of gb that we need to compute and i know that this reaction is 0 0.5 okay and there is another number so anyone can give me what will be the value of this force and also we have a unit load don't forget this one so this is just like an external load in the uh, now so I have the unit loaded joint C. If you see the right side of this ZZ section, I have this unknown FGF. So this is F. Uh, this is FGF. I need to compute this one FGB and this is FCB. And if you see in the original truss on the right side of the section, I have this external load one acting and this reaction 0 0.5 and there is no other external forces and I will compute the FGB. So anyone can tell me what will be this force FGB? Daniel. I think there is an eco problem with you. Daniel, you can you turn your mic on again and calculate this force in member GB? So if anyone else has solved it, you can also tell me. Hasna. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what will what is what will be this force? What is this force? See myself can you. Okay. So first thing is what is this what angle? Is it zero point seven zero seven. Let's say zero point seven zero seven. But can you double check it? There is one small mistake in this one. Okay, so what will uh, what is this angle? Forty-five. Forty-five degree because both sides are six. So let's say ten inverse six over six is equal to this angle, and theta will be forty-five degree. So I will simply apply. Because I know I don't need these two forces, FCB or FGF. I only need uh, FGB, so I will simply apply sigma FY is equal to zero. So how many forces I have in the Y directions? Three forces, the 0 0.5, this one, and Y component of this FGB that is acting in the downward direction. Or I can show it over here. So I have in the downward direction, FGB. One is the applied load, this one unit load. I told you that once we apply it, it is just like an external load acting on the truss, right? Okay, sir. We have to consider everything. So uh, we have this Y component as FGB sine of 45 degree plus one 
is equal to 0 0.5. So when I solve this, I will get the answer for FGB is equal to minus 0 0.707. Okay, so this is my force in member GB when my unit load is acting at joint C. Now I have to repeat this procedure and place the unit load at point B and uh, at another joint. For example, I have to solve all the joint. So any confusion up till this point, up till this force? So that means I can move on. So let's suppose. Yes. Yes. Uh, now I have this truss, uh, this truss section that I have taken up, and I need to uh, calculate this force FGP. Okay. So I know this angle 45 degree, and I have simply I will simply apply the equation of equilibrium that is sigma FY is equal to zero. So how many forces I have in the y direction? This 0 0.5, this one, and the y component of this FGB. So what is the y component? FGB sine of 45, and the uh, other forces are these two, and I simply solved it. Did you get it, Alien? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let's do it for another joint. Now let's suppose that my unit load is at point B. Okay. So can anyone give me the reactions quickly? Again, by simple these steps. 0 0.758A. Okay. 0 0.25A. 0 0.75A. 0 okay. So now I have these reactions when my unit load is at joint B. So again, I will uh, cut the section at this joint or uh, from here because I want to calculate GB. And again, I will consider the right side of my truss. So now in this case, I won't have this force because this force in the second case is acting on the left side of this section and it won't be included in this one. So in this case, I will only have this 0.25 acting. So now I have this 0 0.25 and I need to compute the force in member GB. Again, I will apply the same condition that is sigma FY is equal to zero and FGB. Again, I will have FGB sine of 45 degree and the other force is this 0 0.25. So what is my FGB in this case? Anyone? I will name it as case one. 0.354. And this is key. So th for this case, I have my force as 0 0.354. Okay. So similarly, we will repeat the procedure uh, for all the joints. First place the unit load at point A, then B, then C, and D, and E. So for now, I am leaving it to you, and I am giving you the final answer that when the unit load is being placed, let's say this is the distance, and this is the force in number GB. Okay. So when the unit load is at point zero, or let's say at point A, the force in member GB was zero. And when unit load was at six meter distance, uh, that we have solved in this case too, we get this force as 0 0.354. Okay. So when the unit load is at 12 meter, we have also solved it and we got the force as minus 0 0.707. And when the unit load is at point or at 18 meter distance, I will get the force as minus 0 0.354. And when the unit load is at 24 meter or at the extreme right support, you will get the force in member GB again as zero. So I expect you all to solve for all these joints and <clears throat> verify the answers. So let's plot the IMD. Now we will again Sir, simply. Is the, yes. Uh, force is negative ka sign hai. Ye compression. Uske liye. Uh, yes, it basically shows the compression. For example, in this truss, we have assumed the direction uh, or the tensile direction 
or if the uh, we have assumed that the member is in tension, but we have got the negative sign, so that means that the member is in compression. But we will show the sign just to differentiate between the two. Okay. Yeah. So let's plot the IND for this member GB. Again, we will simply assume it as a beam member or a straight member GB, and for the shape of IND. This is my zero zero axis. And at point zero, I know that the force is zero from this one. And at six meter distance, the force is 0 0.354. And at 12 meter, the force is minus 0 0.707. And at 18 meter, the force is again 0 0.354. Let's say this point. And at 24 meter, again, the force in member GB is zero. So I will connect these points. And let's say, and this is my shape of IND for member GB. And again, if you have to plot the ILD for the whole truss, you have to do this procedure for all the members and plot this shape for all the uh, members separately to get the final shape of the ILD. So this is my uh, ILD for member GB. Can anyone tell me uh, this distance is 6 meters, this distance is 12, this is 18, this is 24. Okay, so can anyone tell me that what is the distance of this joint from, let's say, this point or this support? Anyone? Or uh, just tell the question. Uh, what is this distance where the force is zero or where the force in the member is zero? Yes, good. Uh, uh, so let's uh, solve it by uh, using the simple triangles. So let's say one triangle is this one, this A, B, C, and the other one is C, D, E. So let's say this distance is X. So I have for X distance, the component is 0 0.354. And for this distance, from C to E, what is this distance? Can I say that this is 12 minus 6 minus X? Because uh, this whole distance is 12, so I only need this CE. So that will be 12 minus 6 minus this X distance, and the component is 0 0.707. That, so, uh, two meters? Yeah. So this, when I solve this, I will get the answer as two meter. So from this support or from this right end, basically the distance is eight meter. Now, what does this distance show physically? What does it mean? It basically means, for example, we are plotting the values on this graph and it means that when my unit load is at 0.6, the force in member GB is 0.354. So you can, uh, you, know, you can see such kind of a question in the quiz also, like uh, when will be the, uh, when will this member GB will have a zero force in, uh, zero force in it? So as you can see from this figure, or from this ILD we have seen that when my unit load is at eight meter distance from this support A, for example, let's say eight meter is somewhere here. So when my unit load is at eight meter from support A, the force in this member GB will be zero. So this is what this ILD or the physical meaning of this ILD is, that as the unit load keeps on moving towards, uh, in the bottom part of this truck, uh, the variation of forces in member will be represented on this graph. So when my unit load is at 8 meter distance, the force will be 0. If the unit load is at 12, the force will be minus 0 0.707. So try to understand the physical meanings of these diagrams 
and then you will have a better understanding of how these things work and uh, we are obviously going to utilize these things or these small variation in the design problem that we are so uh, we will uh, design or deflection problems that we will be solving in this course so this is how this works and i will be giving you one small assignment uh, first you have to complete this question as well and then you have to work on the assignment so this is how you solve or plot the ILD for the trust number. If you have any question, you can ask me now. Okay, let's move on then. Sir, we can explain it again. We can unit load ko. पॉइंट लूट के अलावा मिड पे क्यों नहीं रखते मतलब एक मेंबर की मिड पे या किसी और पॉइंट पे जॉइंट के अलावा एक्चुअली व्हेन द यू कैन सी फ्रॉम दिस फिगर यूजुअली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन द केस ऑफ ट्रस्ट दैट द ट्रस्ट स्ट्रक्चर इज समथिंग लाइक दिस वन यूजुअली इट इज इन द केस ऑफ ब्रिजेस और रेलवे ब्रिजेस यू माइट हैव सीन दिस काइंड ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चर एंड द लोड इज मूविंग ऑन दिस डेक स्लैब सो व्हेन द लोड इज मूविंग ऑन दिस डेक स्लैब दिस स्लैब इज बीइंग प्लेस्ड ऑन दिस हॉरिजॉन्टल मेंबर्स व्हिच आर व्हिच वी कॉल एज स्ट्रिंगर्स ओके सो व्हेन द लोड इज एक्टिंग ऑन दिस स्लैब इट विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड टू द स्ट्रिंगर्स राइट so then uh, it will be transferred to the stringers and these stringers are placed over these floor beams which are these vertical members in this direction okay so these vertical members are attached to the truss on the joints okay these joints so basically as the loads continue to move uh, on this deck slab it will be transferred to the stringers first and from the stringer it will be transferred to these floor beams and these floor beams are connected to the joints of the truss so basically the load or the trusses are designed in such a way that the load is considered only on the joints and it happens in the physical case also and be, uh, since the load is acting on the joints we will select different type of sections for these member to provide the resistance against the applied load so this is basically the physical meaning or even if you see in the case of the house structures or in the case of houses what happens actually is from the slab the load is being transferred to the walls and from the walls the load is transferred to the foundation so this is a similar case you have to just see the geometry to see that the how the load is being going on to the foundation for example in this case the load is transferred to this joints and from these joints the load is being transferred to this bottom cord member and from this bottom cord it is being attached to this support and finally from this support the load goes into the foundation so we that's why we are just doing it for the joints even if you solve it for the section you will get the answers and those answers are also correct but it is just a variation if you can get the shape of ind by or if you get the values of ind from this joint and you plot the shape you will for example let me show you over here you are getting the shape of ilds or the values of ild in between the joints also so these are the values obviously you will you can get the values even if you place the load at the center but usually in the case of trusses there is no shear force or bending moment acting and the load for the case of simplicity we will take it on the joints so so that we can get the shape of ild easily uh, did you get the answer yes sir Okay, so uh, let's solve another question, which is basically for the qualitative ILD. We missed it in the last lecture. We have this beam on which there is a internal hinge acting at joint C, and we have to plot the shear force or bend uh, ILD for shear force and bending moment at point B. So let's solve this one, and we have to do it by Muller's method. We plot the qualitative shape. So can anyone tell me what is the purpose of internal hinge? Daniel. This is my joint B and, I, and there is an internal hinge over here. Yeah, and I, what? And I have to plot the ILD for shear force and bending moment at 
joint B. So to plot the shape of our yes, go. On. Sir, जो internal hinge होता है ये जैसे एक support type ही होती है हम इसको support count कर सकते हैं. Uh, yes, actually, the purpose of internal hinge is that it cannot resist the moment. And why it is, uh, uh, for example, why we why is there a need to provide this type of an internal hinge? Basically, its purpose is to transform the. For example, if you see this beam, this is basically an indeterminate structure. So the purpose of internal hinge is to transform this indeterminate structure. to the determinate structure and how it happens is basically uh, we have an additional support and we can cut the beam into two sections at this point of internal hinge and let's say i can make it as this one and there will be an opposite force so uh, what happens actually is uh, that at the point of internal hinge you can divide the beam into two parts and there will be two forces that are acting on this internal hinge because it is basically this kind of a connection so there are like two hinges that are uh, applied or that are installed in a beam structure and the purpose is we can divide the beam into two section and when we divide it we will have two equal and opposite forces occurring at this joint or at this point of internal hinge so what happens is we will uh, for example this is an indeterminate structure i will divide it into two parts and i will solve the left part first and by solving it i will have two unknowns let's say this is x and this is y and let's say there is some load acting over it and i will solve this load and i will get the values of these x and y and now on this right part i will have the opposite force of this y let's say this is minus y now in this right part of the beam again i will have two unknowns and i will simply apply the equation whatever the loads are acting over here and i will get these two values so this is basically the purpose of providing the internal hinge you can solve the indeterminate structure if you have an internal beam we will be solving one problem uh, but for now let's just plot the ild for shear force and bending moment at point b in this case so let's say for the shear force what were our steps we have to cut the beam at the point b so this is the hinge this is the internal hinge over here this is support and i will apply a roller guide at this point and apply the downward shear force on the left side and an upward shear force on the right side okay so what will happen when i will apply the force or the upward force on the right side this part will move up we have solved this previous uh, similar kind of cases in previously and what will happen to this part can anyone tell me the shape or guess the shape will this part move No sir. No sir. Anyone else? No sir. Sisa shape होगा. Ah, you are saying Sisa. Actually, no. Basically, this purpose of ah uh, the purpose of internal hinge is that it cannot resist the moment. So when there is some kind of a rotation, for example, from this end. this internal hinge part will move up as a whole or let's say these type of moments will be acting at an internal hinge so if i plot the shape this whole part will move up and this will be my shape of ild for this case when there is an internal hinge over here now what happens is basically this Uh, point or this support cannot resist the internal moment so when i will apply a force this part of the beam from here to here will try to rotate but obviously if there was no internal hinge this hinge won't allow it to rotate at all but now since there is an internal hinge so it cannot resist the moment so it will allow this part to rotate so when it rotates for example this part rotates actually these two parts are connected to each other just like i have shown you that it is some this kind of a structure at an internal hinge the two supports are connected at a single point so when this right part will move from uh, this blue part will move 
this left part will also move together because this joint has to move up as a whole either in the upward direction or if the direction of this load is different then it will move in the uh, downward direction so this part has to move collectively okay. there is no case that only the right part will move yes sir i have given that but just you gave that pen example that you put the pen on two places and put it as a support so if you do that then it won't move no no uh, actually that was the case yeah uh, i know that is why i'm solving this question actually that was the case when there was no internal hinge so let's consider uh, let's just take that pen example and if you hold it from this point now at this joint there is an internal hinge or let's assume there is a roller over here or there is a free beam at this point now when you try to apply the load it this part can move up due to the presence of internal hinge but again if the case is that there is this kind of a beam and you apply the downward movement now in this case it won't move up when you apply this force these two supports won't allow it to move in any direction but now in this case at the middle there is an internal hinge which allows the rotation so this joint will move collectively for example when i apply the downward load this joint will move collectively uh, in the upward direction and similarly if the load is in the upward direction this joint will be Uh, moving in the downward so the example of the pen also applies in this case but again over here there is a uh, support or there is a condition which allows the rotation that is why this beam moves down yes you can ask the question anyone is this thing clear sir third case mein aapne kya kiya what third case is it's nothing actually it's just for the sake of example Right, have you under, uh, have you got this case ha yes sir okay sir i wanted to ask ke internal hinge ke upar hamesha ek matlab triangle hi banegi na koi change of forces to nahi hoga because actually, at, yeah actually in the case of internal hinge usually you get a kink for example uh, let's plot the diagram of uh, let's plot the ld for bending moment at point b so for bending moment what we the same we have to follow the same step divide the beam into two section at the point and apply opposite moments this was our sign convention okay and there is an internal hinge so now what will happen on the right side this part will move up so again if there was no internal hinge at this point there won't be any sort of moment in this beam but since there is an internal hinge and when you apply the load or when you apply the counter clockwise movement this part will collectively move either in the upward direction or in the downward direction but now you can see that this uh, in this uh, for this case when the orientation of moment is counter clockwise this part will move downward so this part will move down and this part will move upward so this will be my shape of ild for bending movement at point b when there is an internal hinge at this point so any confusion about this one sir yani jo aap dusra part hai uski shape hum as in assume karenge on the basis of the first part jo humne nikala hai which first part this one bending moment mein hum left side mein assume kare na ke hinge ke downwards jo internal hinge hai actual wala No, no, downwards we, like, yeah, just because we are not uh, we are not assuming actually uh, uh, for uh, because i have to plot the ild for bending moment at point b i will divide the beam into two sections at point b and i will apply this uh, these two moments so on the right part the thing is clear that it will move in the counter clockwise direction so the rotation will be upward so on the left part the sorry on the right side it is clockwise movement and on the left part there is a counter clockwise movement so when i try to rotate this member in the counter clockwise direction what will happen let's say there is no connection over here uh, the beam is separate or the beam is something like this one so when i apply the counter clockwise movement what will happen it will move in the shape of this seesaw but due to this internal hinge these two parts will move collectively so when this part will uh, when this part will move in this shape of seesaw 
this part is connected to this one and they have to move collectively. So this part will also move down. So this is what my shape of ILD. So I'm not assuming anything. It is actually happening in the physical phenomena. It is a physical Sir, phenomenon. We are considering the internal hinge present in bending which, moment. Which is present in which moment? Which one is present? This one? Uh, this one? Sir, the first one. Internal this one? hinge. Yes, this one. Actually, uh, this is not an internal hinge. This is just a point B. But uh, uh, if you remember, uh, this is just a simple point. And uh, if you remember that how we, we are going to, uh, how we plot the ILD for bending movement, we divide the beam and basically introduce an internal hinge at point B. Just like in case of shear force, we introduce a roller guide. In case of bending movement, we used to introduce the internal hinge. And what was the purpose is we have to apply the movement. And this is our but sign. But uh, shear force, when we shear force, we consider that internal hinge no, no, we didn't consider this one. Uh, we no, simply. Uh, which one? Uh, this B point or this IH? The, the uh, IH. Yeah, we are considering this internal hinge that it is present. In both the cases. So, but uh, bending what, moment mein uski direction to same yogi na jo uh, jo um, moment wo allow kar raha uh, no no uh, it is uh, okay this thing is making me confused i guess so let's say this is my shape with an internal hinge okay so this is my shape for the internal hinge and it doesn't allow the rotation now whether its direction is this one or this one the other opposite one it depends on the supplied loading so for now just forget about this one and consider this beam so let's say this is the downward this shear force that is acting and on this point uh, the rotation is being allowed, so let's consider it as a free end. So when I try to, uh, when I will apply this force, vertical force in the downward direction, what will be the rotated shape? It will be something like this, right? So when the shape is like this, I have told you that in the case of hinge, the uh, joint will move up or down collectively. It won't be the case that the right side will move up and the left will move down. It has to move collectively because it is a combination of two spokes. If this side will move up, this side will also move up. So what will happen? I will get the final deflected shape like this one. So this is what my answer is, right? This was internal hinge. So in this case, just like I've shown you, I applied the counterclockwise movement and this part can move up and it can also move down. So, but in this case, when the counterclockwise movement is applied, a seesaw shape is obtained just like this one. And this part has to move collectively. But sir, we have a convention that we have a internal hinge on uh, the right side pe clockwise movement hota hai aur, and on the left side anti-clockwise. So I am asking why we consider the bending moment. Actually, uh, internal hinge is basically uh, this, uh, I can say a broad phenomenon. Let me explain you. Uh, we were considering this internal hinge to plot the shape of uh, bending moment, but actually there is not any internal hinge in this kind of a beam. Okay, I can say that uh, there is nothing like internal hinge and I simply applied this type of movement to get the shape of ILD. This internal hinge is actually a support which exists in the beam structure from the start. So it can move up or it can move down. This convention is to plot the shape of ILD, but this I, for this internal hinge, we don't have to consider any direction. It depends on the type of loading that what type of reaction or what type of forces we like. For example, you can consider just uh, this internal hinge or this external support. This internal hinge is just like this external support. When you are solving the beam example or the ILD example, do you assume any kind of direction for this one? You don't, right? No. The direction of this external load depends on the type of load that is acting uh, on the beam structure. But uh, in the case of shear force, 
or in the case of ILD for shear force, we have made one sign convention. Basically, this roller support or roller guide is same as this roller support, but we assume or we fix one sign convention just to plot the shape of ILD, but we didn't play with anything that is existing in the beam. So this internal hinge is the existing beam, uh, is the existing support in the beam or in the structure, and this one is the one that we are introducing for the sake of simplicity to plot the shape of ILD. Did you get my point? Yes, sir. I got it. Yeah, so this is how this thing works. So if there is any other questions, you can ask me uh, right now. And I will be sharing uh, with you one assignment problem, uh, assignment for this ILD person, and it will have multiple questions and it will cover all the topics. So I suggest you to take some time and uh, start and go through the previous lectures as well and solve the example. So if there is no question, we can end this meeting and uh, later on, when you revise it and you have a question, you can always contact me. Uh, thank you very much and Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, sir. Take care. Allah Hafiz, sir.